Today we're going to go ahead and continue with activity 1.7, our game time app. Our main focus for today is going to be looking at how to add sound as well as program the white blood cell sprite to collide with. So for our first part of our activity, we're going to look at the sound. And the sound is basically looking at that checkbox that is on our user interface. So basically what we want to have happen here is if that checkbox is checked, we should get all of the sounds within the game to play. If it's not checked, then we shouldn't hear anything. We will also be learning about how to take an if then statement and embed it into another condition such as our if then else. Now remember there are various sounds that are going to be played throughout this game and the main point of that checkbox is to play all of those sounds if it is enabled. So let's go ahead and open up our MIT App Inventor and look at how we can program that sound component. Now that we have our App Inventor opened up, make sure you go ahead and connect your App Companion as well. We're going to need to test the sound on this as we move forward. So let's take a look at the user interface quickly before we jump into the coding portion of this. Couple things to keep in mind. Down at the bottom of your user interface, you have this sound on checkbox. And again, we should be able to click on that on our app and we can test that in the companion app by turning that sound on or off or basically enable or disable the sound. Something else to keep in mind is that we brought in a non-visible component such as the sound button. Now your sound, if we click on this, you're going to notice that we did not set a source file. We're going to go ahead and set that source file through the coding blocks instead of through our properties window. So let's go ahead and take a look at our block view here. And what we're going to be mainly looking at is when this germ sprite edge is reached. And that's where we're going to go ahead and add in those conditions. So what we're going to need to do for this is basically add an if then statement. So we're going to go up to our control blocks and we're going to grab an if then. Now this condition is going to be set on basically whether or not the sound checkbox is checked, which means it's basically enabled. So we're going to find our sound checkbox in our window or in our block view, and we can go ahead and scroll down and find that sound on checkbox. And we're going to go ahead and find if the sound on checkbox is checked. So that's going to be my condition. If it's checked, then something is going to happen. What we want to have happen here is we want it to play this lose wave file that we already have embedded into the program. And you'll find that wave file if we do go into that designer view. Here you'll see that we have the wave file down below. So let's go ahead and add in the then part of our condition. The first thing we need to do is find that non-visible component, which is your sound. And we're going to go ahead and set that source file. So we're going to set the sound one source file to that lose wave. Now, very similar to how we would do a PNG file, we're gonna go up to our text box, find a blank text box and drop it in. And from there, we're gonna type in the name of the audio file we want to play, which is gonna be lose.wave. Now, once we set that source file, the next thing we need to do is find that sound component again, and we're gonna go ahead and call that sound to play. Now, again, this will only play if that sound checkbox is checked. And we only want this sound to play is when the bottom edge of the screen is reached. So if my germ sprite reaches that bottom one or bottom. So if that germ sprite reaches the bottom edge, which is labeled as negative one, then we would get that sound to play. So we're going to take our condition and we're going to drop it in the if then part of our germ sprite edged reach. Now, what should happen here is if we go ahead and start our game, we still don't have the collide with behavior program. So we're not going to be able to bounce him off of the white blood cell sprite, but we should be able to see him bounce around the screen. And when he does hit that bottom edge, we should hopefully hear a sound. So let's go ahead and give this a try. And there you can see that it reached the bottom edge of the screen and we did get that sound to play. Now, if we go ahead and click on that sound on checkbox to disable it, we should be able to reset it. Notice that my game over is still there. So that's something we're going to have to modify here in a second. But if I hit the start button again, what we should notice is even though it reaches the bottom edge of the screen, no sound was played. So again, if we reset that and start it again, we're going to notice that we were able to disable the sound by checking on that checkbox. 
Now let's address that game over uh, PNG file that's still showing up. Very easy to get rid of that. We've already set that canvas background image to show the game over PNG. So we're just gonna go ahead and right click on that and duplicate that. And we're gonna add this into that reset button. Now, instead of displaying that game over PNG, we're just gonna go ahead and delete that and leave that as a blank text box. So now when we go ahead and hit that reset button, we should be able to go ahead and wipe that screen clear. And there you go, you can see that it is now set back to its default and we're ready to move on to programming the white blood cell collide with behavior. Now it's time to take a look at what happens when the blood cell and the germ sprite collide with one another. So what we have to think about is what should really happen when the two collide. Keep in mind that as your germ sprite is moving, it is moving in a specific heading or direction. What we're gonna need to do is to take that heading and subtract it from 360 degrees. By doing that, we should be able to get that germ sprite to bounce in a natural position so that if it hits the side of the germ sprite, it goes off to the right or left. And if it hits it directly from the top, it should go directly up. So let's go ahead and take a look at the event handler that we're gonna be using for this. In order to get this event to be triggered or this behavior to be triggered, we're gonna use when the germ sprite is collided with. Now you will note that there is an other or a local variable that is also placed within that event handler. It's important to understand that these local variables can only be used for this specific behavior. Now here we have what we call a code tracing chart or our event handler chart. And the blocks that we're gonna be using for this is when the germ sprite heading or setting that heading, we'll be using a subtraction block. We'll be using a math block where we can put in our 360 degrees, and then we're gonna grab that germ sprite heading. So that will grab the current heading of our germ sprite. So let's go back into our MIT App Inventor and program the collide with behavior. Now that we're back into our MIT App Inventor, we need to go ahead and locate that event handler that we're gonna be using. So we're gonna go over to our block view on the left-hand side and find our germ sprite. Once you click on your germ sprite, we're gonna look for the block that says when germ sprite collides with. So let's bring this event handler in. And from here, you can see that you do have that other local variable. We're not gonna be using it for this app, but it is important to understand that that local variable can only be used for that specific behavior. Now, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we need to set the germ sprites heading. So again, we'll go back into that germ sprite and we're gonna look for a dark green block that says set the germ sprite heading to. Go ahead and bring that in and we can go ahead and place that into our event handler. Now, once that's placed into the event handler, we need to do a little equation here that's gonna basically calculate the movement of that germ sprite. So we're gonna go up to that math blocks and we're gonna find a subtraction block. And once we find our subtraction block, we're gonna go ahead and drop that into the end of that puzzle piece. The next step of this is to take 360 degrees and subtract it from the current heading. So in order to do this, we'll grab another math block. We're gonna bring that zero in put it in the first part of the block, and we're gonna go ahead and type in 360 degrees. Once you have your degrees placed inside of that block, the next step is to get the current heading of that germ sprite. So in order to do this, we'll go back to that germ sprite, and now we're gonna find a light green block that just says germ sprite heading. Go ahead and drop that into the end of that puzzle piece, and what we have now is that germ sprites collide with we're gonna set the heading to be 360 degrees minus whatever that current heading is. Now let's go ahead and give that a little test here on our emulator and see what happens when it does collide. So here you can see that we can get them to bounce off and collide with. If it hits the bottom edge of that screen, you're gonna notice that the Aww. game over still plays. We reset it, it goes back to its original location. Now, one of the other things we can do is let's go ahead and add the sound to the collide with behavior. In order to get this to occur, we're basically gonna take this if then statement and duplicate it. Now we're gonna be adding that down to our germ sprite collide with behavior. The only difference here is we don't want to have the lose wave file play if it collides with. So we're gonna go ahead and delete that lose wave. Let's go back to the designer view. 
In that designer view, you're going to notice that we do have this collision wave that we're going to be using. So we want this collision wave to play anytime that germ sprite hits the white blood cell sprite. So we're going to go back to our blocks view and instead of using that lose wave, we're just going to go ahead and type in collision dot wave. Now when we get those two to collide together, we should be able to go ahead and hear that sound. And then we can reset it back. So now you have your sound component working when the edge is reached or that bottom edge as well as the collide with behavior and the sound of the collision wave when the two meet together.